Hello, welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight we have further embarrassment for the ex Royal Montecito brat. And the best or worst part is that he's contradicting Spear, his own recollections. We already knew that Spear was fiction, but we didn't know the true extent. It so happens that we needed Harry to be under oath to find out. Perhaps it was Megan, after all, the true author of Spare. What's even more shocking is that the contradictions have to do with William. As Sky News reports, the Duke of Sausages said it was natural to discuss personal aspects of his life with his older brother. He adds that they would often speak over the phone and regularly left voicemails for one another containing very private and sensitive information. Huh, that doesn't go very well with all that violence that, according to Harry, was his relationship with William. Because, okay, brothers can go through phases. That's something that can happen. But this is a bit too extreme and not a behavior that we have seen in William. Not even clues of such behavior. And it doesn't help that Harry is destroying his credibility himself without any help whatsoever. You remember all those statements from Gingerbread of Buckingham Palace planting stories to the press about him and Meghan? Because that's exactly what he told Anderson Cooper back in January. But what do we have here? This is Harry today. Palace did not have systemic habit of talking about private matters. Harry says that based on the wording, the palace spokesperson said they would not be commenting as it was a private matter. In fact, Harry adds the palace spokesperson's job was, and I quote, quite the opposite. As the fenestrate on Twitter says, straight from the horse's mouth, I'm going to use this on the Sussex squad every time I hear the leaking and planting stories. How can you take this chap serious? Take a look at this. Prince Harry has clearly found having to go through each article, one by one, emotionally draining given their personal nature. He just told the court, it was distressing going through this process, and I would say, more distressing sitting here having to go through it all again. Well, emotionally distressing, having to go through it again and again. It sounds like having breakfast with Megan every day. Yeah, emotionally draining and distressing. And speaking of Megan, you can imagine all the Sussex squad yelling, No! How come Megan didn't help Harry with his case? I mean, she worked in suits. She knows all the legal stuff. At some point, Harry turned combative after Andrew Green said that stories while in Afghanistan are professional life and not private life. Harry complained about that, and Green went full Heisenberg on him. This isn't about you asking me questions. This is about me asking you questions. But perhaps the most revealing part of the trial was when Harry conceded that up until he bumped with his lawyer, he hadn't thought of taking all this phone hacking stuff to the trial. Green says, so prior to you bumping into him, you hadn't sought advice? And Harry answers, no, nothing at all. So it wasn't a concern over any particular article that led you to go to solicitors? The answer is no. So Harry literally revealed that before someone told him to be upset and go for this lawsuit, he was minding his own thing. That sounds suspiciously familiar to Megan's claims in the Netflix horror mentory that she never gave a thought about being black before going to the United Kingdom. It's like these two don't scream victimhood until it's convenient to do so. Who would have thought? But this gets even more embarrassing because Harry claims that he started the hacking claim because he wanted to stop abuse of Meghan. What abuse, Paul? What abuse are you talking about? I generally want to know. And what's even more strange are the statistics of this trial brought to you by Barkjack on Twitter. In case you miss it, Prince Harry's 25,000 word count statement contains five mentions of the wife and more than 100 mentions of Chelsea Davy, and then has the gall to blame press attention for Miss Davy breaking up with him, saying she made the decision 
that royal life was not for her, which was incredibly upsetting for me at the time. But we disagree and Canel puts it very well. Catherine has been through worse press, abuse and intrusion than Chelsea. She is still standing by William. Chelsea simply didn't love Harry enough. That's why she said no to the proposals. Harry needs to man up instead of always blaming the press, where he is clearly lacking. And Canel's timeline also had this gem. A whole prince of the UK, born and raised in the monarchy, refers to his father, the king, on the stand as His Royal Highness King Charles III? His Royal Highness? It's like Harry grew up in a stable in the US while William was raised in the palace in the UK. Like, how do you not know it's His Majesty? I mean, how dumb can this guy be? This is so pathetic that he even thinks he can act. This also happened. Emotional Harry tells Kurt press intrusion has been a lot. Prince Harry appears choked and lost for words as his barrister asks him about the toll the press interest in his life has taken. Harry falls silent. His head drops. He appears to be fighting back tears. It's a lot, he says in a cracked voice. This is pathetic. I am at a loss for words. And among all the stuff that we have seen so far, we got this. No cold data to back up Prince Harry hacking claim against Mirror, Kurt told. Andrew Green asked Harry if he was aware that the claimants in the 2015 phone hacking trial against the News of the World had extensive cold data showing calls to their mobile phones. Harry said he was not aware of that. And yes, that was the same trial in which Rupert Murdoch agreed to settle with Prince William out of court for an undisclosed amount that was later revealed by Harry himself. It's like Green was trying to be kind to Harry, saying, you want the lemonade, but you are not bringing the lemons, so what do you expect? So you tell me if Harry's lawyers don't hate him with all their guts. How in the world these people thought it It was a good idea to follow through with this lawsuit if they didn't even have the evidence that similar trials had. And to finish off today's pathetic stunt at the British courts, we certainly did not want to know that Harry broke down after admitting I don't know 18 times during his grilling. That's what I'm asking. He doesn't even know why he is there. The royal seemed unsure throughout his appearance. Prince Harry also replied, I don't remember nine times in the high court. The Duke called on Andrew Green, representing MGN, to ask his legal team instead of him four times during this morning's session. Harry also told Green, I'll take your word for it several times during the grilling. When asked whether he had any call data to back his claims of phone hacking, Prince Harry said, I wouldn't know. My legal team would know that. And when asked, do you claim you were consistently hacked by NGN between 1996 and 2010? And the royal said, wait for it, consistently? I wouldn't know. And thanks to Mike Rochburns, we got an exclusive pick. Harry seen leaving after a hard day in court today. It looks like it's really taking its toll on him. I think he's gonna need some moisturizer. I have to tell you, I think of William. This must be beyond embarrassing for him. And that's how I know that Harry is not James Hewitt's son. Because it's events like this trials that tells me William himself would have done that DNA test on Harold's hair long ago. He would have wanted to confirm that Harold wasn't adopted, but no luck. Jokes aside, I want to end this video on a high note. William and Catherine offered to restock Burg Swansea Food Bank. St. Thomas Church in Swansea had food, drink, baby toys, and even bikes stolen on Saturday evening. Reverend Steve Bunting said he received the unexpected call from Kensington Palace on Wednesday. They were keen to make sure we could replace the items taken from the food bank, he said. I have no idea how they got wind of the story, but I got a phone call earlier today expressing that the Prince and Princess of Wales were concerned about what happened. Magnificent gesture. I'm sure that someone is going to find a way to criticize this, but let that kind of people bark all that they want, because these actions speak way louder than that.
my 127,000 Royal Rodents, plus the half a million who somehow haven't subscribed yet. I love you all. If you want to support my channel, all you have to do is to hit the like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss any of my episodes. The two most important words, much love and bliss.